Yo, what is going on guys? It's Crypto TMG and we're back with a brand new video. And finally guys, we have the update, the 1.9 update that we have all been waiting for for ACC. And pretty much, man, this is kind of like ACC.20 or 2.0 or whatever, because it definitely is a game changer. It has changed the game quite a lot. And how you drive the cars, the setups, all sorts. There's so much stuff to, to delve into, but I'm gonna be trying to give you guys the best direction and where you want to be going with your setups what you want to do in terms of how you race cars and stuff like that so um let's get stuck into the video so um with me testing out the game so far what i've come to notice definitely is um the big question was whether our old setups are still work whether they still have the toe hats and the toe tricks and stuff like that whether you can still get away with that stuff and to be honest the answer is yes you can but only pretty much in in qualifying and maybe a very short race but it, it will definitely hurt your tires to be running like max negative toe for longer races what i what i have noticed as well definitely on the rear tires for me personally i don't find it as um it, it's, it's not really as needed to run max neg toe on on the rear tires because the cars do have a little bit of rotation through the tires and the way you can use the camber and stuff like that and your tire pressure so <clears throat> for me personally i haven't actually used max negative toe on the rear i've used um almost max negative toe on the front for qualifying it does get the car turning turning a little bit more but um it doesn't seem to you know unbalance the car the way how rear max neg toe seems to unbalance the car especially because the, the cars are a little bit more slidey in the way you can control the rear of the car a bit more with the throttle as well um <clears throat> also as well guys you have to try and keep an eye out for the ecu maps because i believe the ecu map for the lambo is completely different to the lambo before it i think the the best map for the lambo is actually map five which is kind of weird because that would probably normally be like a a, a wet map in the old um in the old car so definitely you know different in terms of the way they've gone around um setting up some of the cars with the, the individual um, nuances for for every car so you kind of have to take your time to get to the car me personally i spent most of my time in the lambo yesterday just trying to learn the car as much as i could um did loads of laps around valencia really really fun track and really really um having having a blast getting to know the circuit and stuff like that but um for me personally i did a a short race and in that race i, I really wanted to focus on looking after my, my tires and seeing how much i could keep the same lap times going because I, I watched a few races i watched like jardia's races i watched Foch, i watched Rufi, i watched everyone pretty much and you know some people you could tell that their tires would go off after a short while so you know i was doing different things trying to think of different things where i could look after tires and you know so i ended up doing stuff like i ended up opening up the rear brake that's a little bit more i put the i had in fact i had no negative toe i actually had positive toe on the rear tires i had negative maybe minus two negative toe on the front for the race and my lap time stayed pretty consistent even though in this race i had damage i started pretty much last and i managed to work my way all the way up to to the podium so um I didn't really suffer any real tire drop off. It did get a little bit slightly towards the end, but actually um, the lap times didn't really drop off at all. So uh, um, it seemed to work okay as well. I actually ran higher brake ducts on the rear than I did on the front. Because for me personally, you know, I prefer if my if my tires are gonna overheat, I'd prefer that the front tires overheat because once your rear tires overheat, it's you sort of lose a sense of the control. Of the car so um i didn't really want that to happen especially on a track where you've got loads of like traction zones where you need to be able to get on the front or the back end sliding all over the place um <clears throat> what i will say as well um with the traction control because I, I know a lot of people are you know they try and deal with the you know the rear end sliding just by putting their traction up very high and even though the traction has improved for me in the lambo i definitely noticed even though it was just a, a minor change I noticed a difference in acceleration from traction four to traction five. I think I was running the TC2 on one and um, I had it on TC5 where I could pretty much put my foot down everywhere and the back end wouldn't step out. 
but I thought it's a little bit too safe. Now, if you're a beginner to the game, that might be fine for you. But um, for me, I, I could, you know, I kept a, a very close eye on my traction, how much it was cutting in and stuff like that. I just tweaked it. I put the TC1 on, on TC4 and I put TC2 on 1. And it was a little bit more difficult to get my foot down, but it definitely made a difference getting out of the corners, man. And, um, that's something you're going to have to test. It's all about evolving the setups. Keep on testing, keep on testing, keep on changing things just to make sure you're getting the, the fastest possible way you can get around the circuit. And that's what I did for the, the Lambo. I started off in mid 32s around Valencia. By the end of the day, you know, I didn't change. I didn't even change my setup that much. I just kept on focusing on traction, um, cambers and, and, and tire pressures. <clears throat> and by the end, I was doing like 31-1. So I ended up gaining like almost a second and a half just by tweaking small things and eventually got the car into the position that I wanted it to be in. Um, but yeah, so much stuff to delve into. I haven't tested all of the cars. I went into the Ferrari briefly. Now the Ferrari, it was, it was weird to me because it was so twitchy. And the Ferrari really is one of them cars where you, you're going to have to... Um, you know, you're going to have to make sure your steering rack matches up with the Ferrari because in some cars you can get away with maybe running slightly off, but in the Ferrari, no, it was way too twitchy, like way too twitchy. I believe that the rotation for the Ferrari is actually a thousand, which is insane, um, considering that the, the rotation for the 488 was, was it, four, was it 480, I think, something like that. So it's, it's insane how much it's changed, man. But um, yeah, the, the new cars are fun to drive. Um, I, I definitely want to have a go in the AMG. That's been completely rebuilt. The AMG, realistically, is an Evo. So the AMG technically is also a new car. Um, but it's still got the same name. So the AMG is a new car. The um, We've got the Porsche. I haven't tried the Porsche yet. I do want to try the Porsche. Um, also, obviously, the Lambo, Ferrari. And, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, definitely put the game in a good state is what ACC needed um tire pressures now as well have changed now the optimum temperature is from 26 to 27 and you know a lot of people saying maybe it's 26 a a lot of people saying maybe it's 26 5 right in the middle um I personally think that it depends on how you drive the car how you like to drive the car if you're someone who uses up a lot of rear tire then you, you might want to you know amend your camber levels and how much pressure you're actually using because the lower your pressure is the more grip you're going to get but the more you're going to uh, warm your tires up so if you know that you're sliding the car around at the rear maybe maybe up the pressures a little bit take a little bit of camber off and try not to get as much heat into the tires or you can do what i did where you open your rear brake ducts to make sure you're getting that cool air through the rear tire so you're not overheating your tires because at the end of the day once them rear tires overheat you're going to be sliding everywhere and if you're sliding you're definitely not going forward anytime soon so um th those will be the things for me now what that means to setups for me is that um you're going to have to a lot of setups are going to be more based on your driving style so it's going to be easy to get setups off of people but your driving style is going to be the main focus now you might want to amend certain things in your driver's style just to be that little bit more smooth a little bit more progressive on the throttle and stuff like that just so you can make your tires last because i honestly believe races are going to be won and lost on people that can really have a smooth input and can look after tires i don't think it's going to be all about all out speed anymore if you if you need to um learn how to you know adjust your style a little bit more some people find it very hard to adjust me personally i would practice i can't wait to see the first race the first endurance race where someone's got to do an hour-long stint without pitting so i can see the drop off in times and stuff like that um, of course a lot of the fastest guys won't be affected because they're very good they're very good at adjusting their style and stuff like that but i believe for the for the mere mortals of this world some people are definitely going to have to adjust being super aggressive on the wheel and stuff like that i'm pretty sure you know you're going to start paying with with, with, uh, with tire wear in these races man. depending on what circuit you're on as well so um yeah i think it adds another element definitely like in this race i i really had to think about it. you can see when i'm getting behind people i'm i'm anxious i want to get on a throttle but at the same time i didn't want to slide the car because 
I didn't. I wanted to be able to go forwards as long as possible before the tire wear started kicking in. And what I noticed is towards the end of the race, how much people were struggling with tires. I think that the guys that were in second and third, at one point, they're like nine seconds in front. And by the end of this race, I believe they only finished about three or so seconds um, in front of me. And if you look at their lap times at the beginning, there wasn't like a massive difference in, in our speed. But because they, they wore their tyres down so much, I was able to just gain and gain and gain and gain. And at some points, I was lapping a second and a half quicker just because of, you know, tyre wear and stuff like that. So it's very, very important. Um, I, I do want to do a, a, a review and see which cars are the best out of the, the new cars. But I'm going to have to test each car extensively and see where we go from there. But definitely, guys, man, um, for me, anyway, so far... It, seems to have been a, a great success the the update it was definitely needed for acc because we were, it was kind of getting a little bit stale it was kind of getting a little bit boring um but it's something that is needed guys it's all about focusing on grinding laps now and finding all the nuances is there any broken setups or broken mechanics at the moment i don't know will there be probably because end of the day it's sim racing man. people will grind all these esports teams will grind and they might, they might find something in the future, but right now, when it's fresh and everyone's just jumped on and no one knows um, if there's any nuances at the moment, it, it's definitely fun. I'm sure in maybe two, three months' time, they might have found something else. There might be a new trick that people use or a new damper trick or something like that. Also, guys, what you might have noticed as well is that the cars seem to be a little bit more compliant over the curbs. Um, there's not as much... How can I say it? There's not as much sort of harem, scarem stuff when you hit a curb, especially if you set your car up decently. Now, I'm not saying that you can just smash curbs and nothing will happen because I don't believe that to be true. But I do think if you have sort of a, a sensible sort of setup, I do believe that um, curbs won't be such an issue. Now, again, a lot of that I was at uh, Valencia, which for the most part is pretty flat, but there is a curb towards the end of the lap can be a little bit tricky if you hit it wrong especially if you haven't set your car up in a you know fairly realistic manner um, now i didn't completely and utterly make a you know blow, blowing away everyone with this setup but it was it was pretty decent and um, the car felt good and it managed to take the curb pretty well but still if you approach the curb wrong you can still get into trouble but for me far less than how it used to be where sometimes you might get tram lined on a curb or it completely just throws you away and you didn't want to attack them. But at the end of the day, these are GT cars and in the real world, the, the curbs definitely get attacked. So um, yeah, for me, I like it so far. Everything I've seen in the game, I, I do like it. Now you might find on some tracks, your lap times may be a little bit slower. I do believe the cars are faster down the straight, but I have a little bit less grip in the corners. But for me, I'll be honest, I didn't even really notice the lack of grip the corners man it felt fine to me um maybe maybe it doesn't have maybe through the fast corners it might not have as much grip but for me it kind of gives you an element of more control that's that's what i've taken away from um this, this patch it feels like you can control the rear end of your car with how aggressive you are when the throttle and stuff like that now i enjoy that because it means that you know you can drive smart now you know, you don't have to be the fastest guy, but you can you can drive very smart. You can say, listen, if I set my car up in a way and drive in a way that's going to benefit me at the end of our stint. So when it gets to the 45th minute of our stint, you can start making gains and stuff like that. Because there is more than one way to race. I felt like before it was literally just, if you're rapid, you didn't really have to think about nothing. You're just rapid and that's it. Now it's a bit more of a thinker's game. The setups don't have to be tuned just to be as fast as possible. You can kind of set your car up in a different way now and um, try and affect the race in, in the way that's best for you. And maybe, maybe it might stop all the people jumping in one car. Now, I know for now, because there's new cars, everyone's pretty much going to probably be in a Ferrari or Porsche. I'm pretty sure they they are the, the most popular. Um, but now you might be able to you know get loads more cars on the grid because some cars for instance i know people people are looking and saying well in aris's stream aris is like the bentley's bop didn't get touched and stuff like that but i was thinking listen the bentley's been 
if there's one thing the Bentley has been, it's been very good on tyres for, for a long time. Now, if you put that into a game where tyre wear can now become an issue, the Bentley might become a reasonable choice now because it's very good on tyres naturally. And, you know, once we start getting into all these endurance races, I mean, the Bentley's always been a pretty good endurance car as well. Um, so I, I've got a sneaky feeling that the Bentley's probably probably better than what people think and in fact i think today i might just try it out i might just try the bentley out and see how it goes in in a race um i believe lfm for the next two days or a day or whatever lfm are doing some races where you can't gain elo i think you can only gain safety rate or something like that on this new track so i'll be able to you know um compare exactly how the bentley goes and what the tire is like what i will say guys for everyone that's doing races and practice and stuff like that um keep checking your every time you make setup changes and you run a race or whatever keep checking your tire wear at the end of the race even if you have to write it down or make a, a a mental note keep checking it at the end of the race because that's going to push you in the right direction to what you need to do in the future um that's what that's what i've been doing at the end of every race i check how much tire wear i've got the setup if it's you know if i've done a 25 minute race and the tire wear is insane then I know I have to go in a different direction with the setup and try something else that where I'm not going to lose too much speed, but it's going to benefit me in the long haul because I've seen guys getting crazy tire wear after 25 minutes and that's okay for online races, but as soon as you start doing leagues and stuff like that, that's no good, man. You, you're going to need, <laughs> you're going to need your, your tires to last a little longer than 25 minutes, man. So um, yeah, now for me, what I noticed um, so far with the setups, I was watching some of Aris's uh, videos and he said something about, you know, you no longer have to just feel like you need to run a lot of wing um, to, to get the car to, to, you know, be compliant and go fast and stuff like that. So I tried that theory of running less wing, amend the setups and use the lower wing to get rotation and stuff like that. And then I tried the higher wing and what I will say for now, for me, higher wing still seemed quicker because um, you have to remember in the braking zones you can brake later um, you've got downforce when you're getting out the corners you're not sliding as much now obviously you're going to lose something down the straight but a lot of the time with, with ACC it's pretty much down to how you get out of the corner um, even if you're running a lot less wing um, we we'll take Paul Ricard for it for instance you can be you can have the same middle sector but have five clicks different on the wing just because of the way you get onto the onto that back straight now when you're running when you're running less wing sometimes you're sliding around before you get to the back straight and therefore um you're not able to you're not able to put your foot on the throttle as quickly whereas sometimes you've got a little bit more downforce you slam your foot down easy easy mode and you know you get to a you get to you know get to, to full speed a lot quicker and you know at the end of the day that's what it's all about and for me now definitely how you have to look after these tires i believe at the moment running higher wing is quicker overall more consistent than running low wing but um tell me what you think in the comment section guys tell me what you feel about the update i will be bringing out more videos for the rest of this week um it might even drop some setup videos for members and patreon so Keep an eye out for that. But anyway, guys, it's Cryptic TMG. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace.